Well, hey kids, uh, I'm here in my office today uh, recording this, and uh, we just wanted to let you know that we love you and that we appreciate you, we miss you. Um, but uh, once again, we want to put out another video for you to let you know that we love you and appreciate you and wanted to do something special just for you. So this week we have a special theme, and the theme is obedience. And uh, we all need to be obedient, not just the children, but adults, us adults need to be ob obedient as well. And so anyway, I hope that you'll greatly enjoy this video and uh, that you'll learn and uh, you'll learn the importance of obeying. Uh, obeying your mom and dad, but most of all, obeying the Lord. And so with that, hope you enjoy the rest of this video. We'll see you at the end. Hello, in this week's Moments in Creation, we're going to get to see that uh, not everything we think about creation is uh, out there. We often think of the physical things out there, but there's more than just the physical in work in creation. Uh, a familiar verse to uh, most children and parents out there is going to be Ephesians 6.1. In fact, it's right here on the board over here. And it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. An important verse doing the things that uh, our parents ask us to do because it's what God expects us to do is the right thing to do. But it goes beyond just that. Colossians 3.20 also tells the children to obey parents in all things for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. So it's not just the things the Lord commands us to do uh, as passed on by our parents but in all things we should obey our parents because it's pleasing to God. In life, there are many reasons to be obedient, and two of those are, as we just pointed out there in those verses, first, because it's right, and also next, because it's well-pleasing to God. But in obedience is even more important than that, because when we're disobedient or rebellious, which are the opposites of obedience, it can cost us in ways that we don't even begin to think about. In the Bible, obedience to God is the key to our very uh, salvation. We see this in John 3.16 where it tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In uh, this passage, it's talking about God giving and he gives his only begotten son, Jesus. And what does he give him to? He gives him to die on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. If Jesus had not been obedient, if he'd rebelled or been disobedient to God and not given his life there on the cross, then we would forever be lost in sin. Philippians 2.8 takes this a little further and reminds us that Jesus is part of the Godhead uh, when it says, And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto, the, unto death, even the death of the cross. This tells us that while Jesus was God himself living there in heaven, he left his home in heaven to come to this earth as a man and live out life here. And in doing so, he was being obedient to God the Father. And he did that for our sake, showing that love that God has for us. Yet the Bible also shows us that while he was man, Jesus was also God still because he can command obedience of unclean spirits as we see uh, in uh, the passage in Mark 127 and we also see him command the wind and the sea and they obey his commands in Matthew 827 Mark 441 and Luke 825 in each of these passages Jesus commands the wind or the seas to calm down and they do just that men are amazed by the fact that even the wind and the sea obey. So obedience is not just for people, but it's expected of all things, including things we don't see, like the wind. And that's been the case from the very beginning. When God created the universe, there in Genesis uh, chapters 1 and 2, we see obedience demonstrated in many ways. Our first example is there in Genesis 1-3, says, God said, which is a command, and this command was obeyed, let there be light. What if the light hadn't obeyed God? There wouldn't be any light. And without light, it's dark. Not dark like at nighttime when we go outside and we can still see things by the light of the sun and the, or excuse me, the light of the moon and the stars, 
but we're talking total darkness, absolute blackness. Close your eyes and that's not even the beginning of that darkness. But it's more than just darkness that would result, but without light, plants would not grow. And if plants don't grow, we don't have any food because the plants themselves are food if you like veggies. But if you don't like veggies and you eat meat, well, the meat eats the plants. So it's very important that that light obeyed God. Again, in verse six, uh, God says, another command, let there be a firmament. This firmament is what we call the atmosphere or it's the air and we breathe it in every day. Had the firmament not obeyed God, we'd have been underwater. We'd have to go through our lives without any chance to get air. Next in verse nine, God commands the waters and he commands the waters to be gathered together into one place. When this happens, that's the first time we see dry land appear on the earth. Prior to that, everything's underwater. If those waters had not obeyed God, we'd be destined to forever swim through our lives like fish. In verse 11, God commands the earth, and he commands the earth to bring forth plants, and it is so. Again, the earth obeys God's command. Without plants, like we said before, there would be nothing to eat for us or the animals. In verse 14, God makes the sun, the moon, and the stars with yet another command. He speaks, and it happens. Had the sun not obeyed, again, we wouldn't have sunlight to uh, help the plants to grow, and as we said, no food. So we continue to see God speak throughout the creation uh, story, there in Genesis 1 and 2, and in verses 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, in each of these cases, God is speaking a command. And in each case, that command is obeyed. It demonstrates that we have the word, or so that, and in each case, obedience is demonstrated. As a result, we have the world around us as we know it. And as noted last week, when it's all said and done, God says that it's not just good, it's very good. So when children obey their parents in the Lord, we do this because it's right. Or as it was pointed out in Colossians, if we obey them in all things, it is well pleasing to God. God was very pleased with his creation. The key is all of creation obeyed God and does today. Okay, we're gonna play another game this week. And this week, our theme is obedience. Today, the game is called Mind Build, because you better mind who's telling you what to do. Wow. Now, here's what, how, how the game's gonna work. Once again, you've gotta choose Brother Blake's team. Or Brother Jake's. But definitely choose Brother Blake, because this week, Brother Blake's gonna win. I doubt it. Okay. Well, here's how the game's gonna work. We got a blindfold, so Brother Jacob's got our blindfold. He's gonna put the blindfold on, and Brother Blake is gonna tell him where to go in the minefield. Now he's gotta listen and he's gotta be, he's gotta obey my instructions or is he gonna make it through the minefield? No, of course he won't make it through the minefield. So that's how it's gonna work. He's gotta listen to me and obey what I say so he can make it through the minefield. Now, the person who hits the most mines loses. So brother Jake's gonna take a turn, then I'm gonna take a turn. And if brother Jake hits more minefields than I do, I win. Sound good? That's not gonna happen, kids. Okay, sounds good. So here, let's get going to the game. Okay, and here it goes, the game begins. Brother Jake, can you see anything? Not a bit. Okay, so I gotta take Brother Jake through the obstacle course. He's gotta obey every word I say. Brother Jake, you ready? Okay, here it goes. Brother Jake, take five giant steps forward. Okay, those are really giant steps. Take one more. Okay, now just keep going straight. Hold oh, no! on! Take a step to the right. Right, so this side is right. No, 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 that's no. Keep going to the right. I'm sorry, I was thinking my right, not your right. Okay, take three steps forward. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, <laughs> my fault. Okay, that's one hit for Brother Jacob, I'm sorry. Okay, here it goes. Take a step to the, oh, hold up, no, you know, take one step forward, small step forward. One more small step forward. Okay, now take a step to the left. 
To the right! To the right. I'm sorry. I'm back. Okay, there we go. Take three steps forward. Take one more. Take one more step forward. Okay? Now, you gotta take a step right in front of your right foot. Okay? That's your right foot. There you go. Be careful. Oh, watch that left foot. There's a basketball right next to it. Just make it follow that last foot. Anyway. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Okay, take a step to the left. Okay, one more step to the left. Take a step forward. Okay, take a step to the right. One more step to the right. Okay, one small step to the right. Okay, now you got something right in front of you. You need to take a big step over it. Big step over it. Oh, 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 I hit it, oh, I hit it. He hit the basketball. Okay, it's really Jacob. Just, just get yourself situated back straight. <laughs> You did. Okay, Brother Jake's hit three things. Okay, Brother Jacob, you need to take a small step backwards. Small step backwards. One more small step backwards. Um, take a small step to the right. Okay, hold up, hold up. Take a small step backwards. Now I need you to get down as low as you can. Hold up, slowly, slowly. It's right in front of your face. Okay, okay, hold up, that's low behind you. Don't hit it. Okay, get down. <laughs> Okay, okay, oh, 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 yeah. okay, hold up, hold up, get down on your hands and knees, slowly. Okay, now crawl forward, crawl forward. That was pretty well done, guys. Okay, crawl forward. Now take, take, crawl to the right. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, now keep going straight, watch that left. Oh, oh, he just hit another cone. It's okay, keep going forward, keep going forward. Brother Jake, how many things have you hit so far? Like five. Oh, no. Okay, hold up, stop. Now curve to the right again. You're almost out of here. Just, just keep crawling, keep crawling. Hold up, hold up, come back to the left and just come forward all the way. Keep going, keep going, oh, oh, oh. yeah, keep going. Straight, straight, straight. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And Brother Jacob made it. Good job, Brother Jacob. Look at what you just did. You had to go through the wood pole and all the way through here. I'm a champion. Okay. What do you think of your results, Brother Jacob? I think that's good enough to beat Brother Blake's. Ooh, okay, we'll see. Here it comes up next. Go. You ready, Brother Blake? Um, I think so. This okay. is scary, though. Take three steps forward. Uh, three big steps? Three big steps. Okay, stop. Now I want you to go to your right, two giant steps. Take one small step to the right again. Now go forward. One, two, stop. Now, narrow walk about three steps. Narrow walk three steps. One, two, three. Stop. Now take a little step to the right. There you go. Now walk two medium steps forward. Now crouch. <laughs> okay, now get, don't touch anything. Don't move your hands forward. Now go to the ground as much as you can. There you go. Now walk, crawl, crawl. Straight? Yes. Wait, stop, you're about to hit something. Go this way. <laughs> What's this <laughs> way? Go right a little bit. Curve right, there you go. Now straight, curve, curve, curve. I'm not gonna count that. Curve, wait, stop, good. Now go left a little bit. Go left a little bit. Now crawl, 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 crawl. Crawl. Don't don't move too much out here. Oh, he hit something. He hit something. Where? 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 Your your legs literally touching it. Where? Now stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Oh! <laughs> now you're gonna walk to your left a little bit. One step to your left. There you go. Now walk forward. Now no wait. Stop. 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 Curve towards the left. No, towards the left. There you go. Wait. Wait, stop. Oh, he hit another object. He hit another object, kids. Now move to the right one step. Now walk forward, walk forward, walk forward, walk forward, and you're out of this. Woo! Woo! That was that, hard. That was intense. How many did I hit? Two. Okay, this week we're gonna have a lesson about obedience because that is our theme for this week. 
So at this time, what I need you to do is make sure you have your Bibles. If you don't have your Bible, hit pause on the remote and go grab your Bibles real quick. Okay, so right now go do that. Get your Bibles. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1. If you need help finding that, ask your parents. You can hit pause till you find it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1. Here's what it says. Children, that's talking to you guys, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. So here's what we're talking about today. Children, obey your parents. You know, right now, all of us, we're stuck at home. We're doing all these other things. You know, we're stuck and we don't know what to do. We get bored. And sometimes, you know what it's going to cause us to not want to do is obey our parents. We, we're, we're seeing a lot more of our parents. You know, we have a lot more to do. Now there's some of our parents are our teachers now. But you know what? The Bible tells us children obey your parents. So here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to tell you guys a story about a time when I did not want to obey. So about two, uh, no, about three years ago, I worked for the summer, I worked at a zoo. Who likes zoos? If you like a zoo, just say, I like zoos. You can't tell me, but I love zoos. And I got to work at a zoo. I got to work with, with the zebras, with the, with the horses, with the um, ostriches, I got to work with all these different kinds of animals, but my favorite was the baby camel. I was in charge of the baby camel. So what I had to do every day is I had to go, I had to get its bottle put together and I'd go feed it every single day and I'd take care of this baby camel. But at my zoo, there was, there was a few rules. Um, I mean, you know, I had to take care of the lions, take care of different things, but there was a couple rules. And one of the rules was, my job was to take care of the baby camel, but I was not allowed to go in with the big camels. Now the big camels were super tall, way taller than me, taller than the ceiling is. The big camels were super tall and they were mean. So one of the rules was, my boss had told me, Blake, you cannot go in with the big camels. So, you know, one day I was, I was working at the zoo and I was walking down the trail and I was walking past the big camels and as I was walking, somebody, somebody that was there, it was a guest, it was somebody who was at the zoo, they, they said, hey, 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 you, you, do you work here? And I was wearing the zoo shirt, so I was like, well, obviously I work here. So I was like, yes, I work here. What can I help you with? And they were like, do you see the big camel? And I was like, yeah, I see the big camel. What's wrong? And she said, its harness is going in its eye. Now, do you know what a harness is? This is what a harness is. A harness is those things they put around, you know, an animal's mouth. You know, they put it around their heads so you can put a leash on it and pull it around. So its harness was on its mouth and it was actually sticking up and it was going in its eye. And, and the customer was really nervous about it. She was like, you, you need to go take care of that or else the camel is going to go blind. And I was like, well, ma'am, I'm not allowed to go in with the big camels. And she was like, listen, you got to take care of this right now or the camel's going to go blind and it's all going to be your fault. So I started thinking about it and I was like, should I go in with the big camels? My boss told me not to go in with the big camels, but should I go in with the big camels? And I was thinking about it and I said, you know what, ma'am, I'm going to go get my boss and then I'll come and take care of the camel. So I, I started to walk away and you know what she did? She grabbed my arm, she pulled it back and she said, no, you need to take care of the camel right now. And I was like, ma'am, I can't take care of the camel. So I started trying to walk away again. She grabbed my arm, she pulled it back again and she said, no, you need to take care of the camel now or it's gonna go blind. And I was like, oh man, this lady, what am I gonna do? So you know, you know what I did? And this is what I did. I took my keys out of my pocket and I went up to the fence and I unlocked the fence and opened the gate and closed the gate behind me, locked it back up and I was pretty nervous, I'll be honest, I was pretty nervous. I was thinking, what am I gonna do? 
because these camels are mean. But okay, the camel was laying down. It was laying down over here. So its head was about about right here. So here I am. I came in the gate and I'm kind of scared. So I start slowly walking, slowly, quietly walking. And then I get to the camel and I see its harness. It's in its eyes. So I reach up. I grab the harness. I pull it down. I said that. Nothing happened. I was okay. Everything was okay. I was like, oh, okay. That wasn't that bad. I, and I started looking at the harness and I was like, I think I should tug it one more time. So this time I'm not scared anymore. And I just walk up to it and I reach my hand up to grab that harness and you know what happened? The camel churned its head, bit my hand, and then I had to pull my hand out and it bit my hand and left this huge line. It, it had tore my skin all the way down my hand. And now I was bleeding really bad and it hurt and I, I started to be scared again and I, I ran to the gate, I unlocked the gate, I closed the gate behind me and I locked it back up and I got out and I was like, oh man. And I looked up and you know who was out there? That lady who made me go in there with the camel. You know what she was doing? She was laughing at me. She was laughing at me. How mean is that? She's the one who got me to go in there, made me go in there, and now she's laughing at me and I have this huge cut on my hand. So, you know, I, I got cut and I, I left and I went to the hose and I cleaned it all off and I took care of it. And then I had to tell my boss that I did not do what I was told. Now my boss, she didn't fire me, she didn't do any of that. She just said, don't ever do that again. But you know what? Did Mr. Blake, did, did I obey? No, I didn't. And you know what? Because I didn't obey, this camel bit me. You know, my boss, she gave me these rules. She gave me the rule, I'm not allowed to go in the camel cage. You know why? Because she didn't care about me. Because she didn't want me to have fun. You know that? Do you think that's true? That's why she didn't want me to go in there. She didn't care about me and she didn't want me to have fun so she did not want me to go in with the big camels. Is that true? Hmm, I think you're sitting at home and you're saying, no, of course it's not true. You know what? She told me I wasn't allowed to go in with the big camels because she cared about me. She did not want me to get hurt. And you know what? Your parents, they care about you. They don't want you to get hurt. They want to make sure you get a good education. And you know what? Your parents will tell you to do things a lot. They will. And you know what? Is it because they don't care about you? Is it because they don't ever want you to have fun? No, it's because they do care about you and it's because they do care about you having fun and they do care about you having a good education. So they're gonna tell you to do things. And you know what? We might not always understand. Now, most of you guys are old enough to understand this. But see, when I was young, one of my rules at my house is you can't play in the middle of the road. Now, did my parents tell me that because they didn't want me to have fun? And they didn't care about me? What do you think? No, of course not. They don't want me to play in the middle of the road because they don't want me to get hit by a car. And you know what? Your parents, they have rules in your house and they have all these things because they care about you and because they love you. And you know what? We need to make sure we're obeying our parents because the Bible tells us to. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Make sure you're obeying your parents. You know what, you're at home a lot more and you're, you're seeing your parents a lot more and you're probably getting chores to do and everything like that. You know what, obey your parents. Um, when I was young, what we always said was obedience is doing it the right way with a smile on your face. The first time you're asked, that's as well as part of it. So obedience is doing it the right way the first time you're asked with a smile on your face. So are you obeying your parents? Because does the Bible tell us to obey our parents? 
Yeah. Are they telling us to do these things because they, they don't care about us? No, it's because they love us. So make sure you're obeying your parents and you're doing what you're told to do. Okay, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these kids who listen, Lord. I pray that you'd help them to understand that their parents love them and care about them and want them to have a good future, Lord. And, and there's rules that they have to abide by and listen to because of, because, because of sin in our lives and things like that, Lord. I pray that you'd help them to understand that they need to obey their parents. I pray that you'd help them to think about that this week. And I pray all this in your name. Amen. Well, kids, I hope that you greatly enjoyed that and that the Lord spoke to your heart about the importance of obedience. And once again, the importance of obeying your mom and dad. Uh, the Bible talks about the importance of that. The, uh, there is a great promise for those who choose to obey and honor your parents. And then also those who choose to obey the Lord. God does promise great blessings for those who uh, live in obedience to Him. And so whatever He is leading you to do, I would encourage you to be obedient to him in that. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Um, but uh, until then, obey the Lord. Have a great week. God bless. Bye.